Hi everyone, it's Simone Watson and I owe y'all an apology because I said that, okay, I was going to count down, I am going to count down my top 100 most anticipated books of 2018. I'm still surprised that I have as many anticipated books of 2018 as I do. Um, but I was planning to start those videos on Tuesday of this week and it's just taking me a longer time to narrow the books down than it did. I have 270 something books on my 2018 TBR Goodreads shelf. Um, and I didn't think it would take that long to narrow down. I was wrong. It's taking a while. So I may end up starting those on Monday of next week. Sorry. I may end up starting those on Monday of next week and just doing like two groups of 10 each day and then two groups of 10 on Saturday. So yay. Okay. Um, however, I went to the library today. I had to go for a different purpose. But while I was there, I went and got some books um, because I was in a bad mood. And I was like, these books, getting some books will help cheer me up. Kind of like shopping, kind of like book shopping, but in a library. Anyway, let's get to it. Um, so the first two books are technically, I've checked them out for my mom, but I'm going to show them to you because you'll see why. The first one is Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore. Um, So this one, I have checked it out for myself before, and then I just didn't get to it. I didn't read it, but my mom wants to read it now because... She and I listened to Grace Ling together on audiobook. That was like the first of like a bunch of audiobooks that we listened to together in the car um, over like a period of time. And that was a lot of fun, uh, reminiscing. In fact, um, we were on a vacation, uh, like, and like my whole family got interested in Grace Ling. And it's funny because there were like certain parts that like we couldn't listen to with the whole family, if you know what I'm saying. So um, we had to skip to track 12. So um, yeah, good times though. Good times. Let me know if you all want a review of Graceling. It's been like four years since I read it, but I can still remember my thoughts. So anyway, the second book I have here is You Can Teach Someone to Read. This is one that I picked out because I would like to help teach kids to read. But then I was like, I was like, I'm going to put this one back because I really want to downsize the stack. And then my mom was like, no, just check this one out for me. So I was like, okay, so she might read it, I might read it. We don't know, but yeah, fun. Um, okay, so of these books, I went to the library knowing full well, kind of saying to myself, Simone, you know you don't really need to get a whole stack of books because you already have a bunch of books. If you have seen my December TBR, y'all know, I already have a bunch of books that I need to read this month. So adding more books to the pile is kind of... But I justified it by saying most of the books that I ended up with are for research, for writing research. So I don't even have to read the whole book, you know, they're just for writing research. One of them, though, is not for writing research, and that is A Study in Scarlet by Arthur Conan Doyle, somebody named Edgington, and somebody named Colbert. There should be full names somewhere in here. Um, so yes, this is an adaptation of a Sherlock Holmes story. Come to think of it, this could be some writing research because my primary nano novel is a mystery. Yay! Okay, so yeah, this is a graphic novel adaptation of a Sherlock Holmes story. And I was like, this, if like I get to a point where I'm just, I just need to kind of like relax, I can read a little bit of this. Yay! Or read the whole thing. Um, As I've said, the rest of these are for novel research. So first I have... Hiroshima, The World's Bomb by Andrew J. Rotter. Um, this, yeah, so it's about Hiroshima, of course, which was how World War II ended on the second front. And um, my primary nano novel, I keep saying my primary nano novel, it's called Yeah, I Killed Him, but I feel bad saying that. Anyway, my primary nano novel takes place in the summer of 1945 between the Victory Europe part like the 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 end of the war on the European front and the end of the war on the Japanese front it's like in between those times and my main character is a World War II spy so I just kind of need to know about that time period and things that led up to Hiroshima and so here we go this book next we have I Love It When You Talk Retro by Ralph Keyes um is that a subtitle? I don't know. I'm just going to go with that. Yeah. 
Um, so this one has to do with American slang and like where certain expressions came from. And um, yeah, I think that this could be pretty interesting for, um, again, pre, you know, primary nano novel research because it takes place in the 1940s. So we need some slang, um, but more so than the slang, I am in it for the codes because since this is a wartime novel, it may involve some codes of some sort. So anything linguistically that would help us get some 1940s language that can be used in code form, that could be helpful. Um, the next two have to do with that as well. So this is The Origins of Writing, The Origins of Writing, um, edited by Wayne M. Sinner. Sinner? I think, Sinner. Um, and I think this is a collection of essays based on the, yeah, this is a collection of essays about the origins of writing. So again, this might help with the whole code thing as well. You got some like different analysis of symbols and different things like that. And finally, Lost Languages by Andrew Robinson. Oh, Lost Languages, the enigma of the world's undeciphered scripts. Again, to help with the code, um, related stuff, but also because I am a huge linguophile. I'm a huge language nerd. I could just, yes, I could probably just sit and read this. Um, so yeah, there we go. I went in the library to relieve some stress and ended up getting some things that are going to help with my research. Yay! I do not know when I will go back to writing primary nano novel, but uh, hopefully January. Um, I'm trying not to overthink that because as you probably know from my writing goals video, I'm just, yeah, anyway, trying to let December be December. But anyway, maybe I will read some of these books, some of the, some pieces of these books and use it for research. So let me know what you all are doing. If you are reading something for your writing research, if you have ever gone in the library knowing dang well that you already had a bunch of books you needed to read, but then you got some more books. I'm starting to understand people that do those book hauls where they're like, I said I wasn't gonna buy any books. And then, oh, look, a bunch of books. Um, I kind of understand it. I mean, technically this is a library. It's a little bit different, but I have a little taste of what that feels like. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. And I don't know why I keep doing those things with my arms. And I will see you tomorrow. And either tomorrow or Monday, I said either, I usually say either. Either tomorrow or Monday, I will start my countdown of my 100 most anticipated books of 2018. And I am sorry about that delay. Okay, uh, bye.